Hello, everyone. I'm Sonia Shin with A Beautiful Life, and I am so excited today to be with Katrina Rao, who has more than two decades decades of experience in the makeup industry and in the entertainment industry as well. And so much, we've done so many makeup videos over the years and I did get a request. Um, I have been asking people if they have any special requests for these videos. And I did get a request from a friend of mine who is um, hundred percent Asian and asked about Asian eye makeup. So I am 50% Korean and a mix of English, Welsh and Scottish. Um, and Asian eyes are very different, uh, even if you're 100% Asian. Um, and I know I asked Katrina if she would do this video with me because you have so much experience in makeup doing all sorts of ethnicities, especially in California. Um, and so I've done like, you know, I put on like some base and uh, bronzer and so forth, but my eye makeup is done so or not it's, it's ready for you to give me some <laughs> tips you're like not and, done <laughs> yeah so it's not yeah. done and I've, I've worked with so many makeup artists and I was I was telling Katrina that I've worked with a lot of makeup artists who have done things to do a lot of like sophisticated contouring and to make me my eyes look more Caucasian and what oh, I yeah. want to do at this time though is like how can we embrace um, I mean, I even had a plastic surgeon who was telling me she would do all this stuff to basically take the Asian away from my eyes. And I oh, want to really on. embrace <laughs> all of my, you know, heritage and everybody to just like embrace the beauty that is right there. So Katrina, what tips do you have? And I'm going to, I've got, I'm, I've got an arsenal of makeup here. I love it. I know we're all junkies. We know each other well in that way. Yes, definitely. So I absolutely agree. Definitely embrace what you have and show that. I am not of the opinion that we need to change anything about ourselves to put our first, um, our best foot forward, so to speak. So my uh, philosophy has always been, let's work with what you have and really show that off and show your own personality in that and your ethnicity and everything that makes you you. And, um, and your eyes are gorgeous. Why would you wanna change the shape of those? I just, Thank I you. never understood that um, ideology. So to get started, I would say the first thing is to always frame your eyes. So I already went ahead and did my brows. So okay. go ahead and jump in. You do beautiful brows, so I'm not too concerned. <laughs> I see you have your, um, your brow, yep, multitasker, my favorite. So um, what she's showing is basically it has a gorgeous um, uh, triangle tip. So you can do little short strokes, or you can do a wider stroke on the eye. It also has your brush, little spoolie that can kind of comb and get your um, brows in order, so to speak. But then it has a really fun little compartment that has shadow. And I find that that sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I just like to really give it a little bit of fullness sometimes. I am of the um opinion that a nice strong brow really frames the eye before i even go in with um eyeshadow but it is a preference and sonia is really taking a look at her own eyeshadow eye um brow shape and working with that and i really do suggest that you know making you know whether they say oh arches are in or oh you know thin is in you know <laughs> all of these things I think it really needs to flatter your eyes. If that is in, then I'm like, oh, I don't you're, know if you're anything. No. <laughs> but, um, but, but still, you know, we as women try to go with trends, but we forget that we have a face that we want to compliment sometimes. And I think it's really about the complimenting. So you do a fabulous job with that. So I have a question. Yeah. I've never really kind of known what to do. Like the brush, I typically will put the, the, the powder or the shadow on or the pencil and then I'll brush. Should I be brushing first? Or... Sorry about that. Of course. I you have an assistant there you. helping? <laughs> I do. Roxana. Sorry about that. Um, oh, so <laughs> I always get these packages. I don't know about you guys, but when I am right in the middle of something, that's when I get a package and my dog goes nuts. We were just talking about this yesterday. Roxy, go lay down. Okay. Sorry about that. So mm -hmm. to answer your question. It's a mail. <laughs> really, yeah. I, I get packages a lot and, uh, you know, so it really is um, about if you need to comb them in place, or I will give you a little tip. Sometimes I will take a brow brush first and comb down a little bit. 
What? I know. I'm going to blow your mind just with this. So the reason why I comb down is so that I can get to the root of that brow and go as high as I can go because we all like to have that nice open wide space oh. of framing. So I do that with a pencil first uh, with the with the brushing down, then the pencil, then I comb back up and it's actually in place because it's more in the middle of the brow. Does that make sense? So when do I come in with the powder? So the powder is after. And the powder is you take a look at your eye and you say, is there any gaps? So a lot of times I have a little bit of fill in that I need like in the arch right here because it gets a little thin for me. The other place that I really like a little bit of powder is if I want to set it. Because as you know, a wax can get a little bit, um, it can get a little melty. And Especially move a bit. as it gets warmer. Right. So if it's going to move and you have, you know, that issue, then I like to use it almost like if you think about setting powder for the face, it's setting for the brow. Okay. So that looks fantastic. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a little bit of color. And you can go, like, there's no rules in makeup. That's the beauty of it. But if you're going to think about what's flattering, if you are, you know, an Asian woman that has that beautiful olive tone, whether it's fair or deep, doesn't matter. Something more cool, like a cooler gray or a cooler blue or, or cooler um, purple can be nice. Okay, because it will pop against your skin tone. So it's not just about the eye, right? And the eye color. Mm -hmm. It's also about your skin tone. A lot of people don't think about that. And you also don't want it necessarily to compete unless you want a lot of compliments on your eyeshadow and just be fancy that way. But a lot of times I like them to say, ooh, your eyes are beautiful. Not, ooh, your makeup's beautiful. That's just me. So okay. with that, I'm going to do for myself, I'm going to do, um, so we're going to do something different today. I know you were okay. like so ready on the line. <laughs> Now, I like to change it up and keep you confused. So today we're going to start with shadow and then liner. And I'll, okay. I'll explain why as we go. So I'm doing more of some of the, the grays, but I want you to see the difference. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't even know what cool and warm is. If you look at that, you can see this one is a little bit, sorry, this one is a little bit more warm. This one's a little cooler, still neutrals. So I like to, or if you want to do, you know, a little bit cooler with some burgundies and purples, you can. So anyways, it doesn't matter as much about the shade. It's about the placement. So let's talk about placement. Because I don't really have any. No, you much, have I any tend to have listen. mostly warm tones. Listen, and that's okay because you're not as olive. You could even go crazy. I don't, I don't really mind. So if you want to do a warm, because here's the thing, you actually want something more neutral. I know your style. I know that you like to be more natural, right? So if you're gonna go on the natural kick, a little bit of warm and a little bit of cool makes neutral. Oh. So it's really about gradation of how warm, how yellow and how cool. So I guarantee you, you're not as yellow as they go. It's not a, a gold tone in your mm -hmm. shadows. You have more neutrals. I've seen your palettes. <laughs> <laughs> You can definitely do it. And then it's just a soft shadowing or a soft smoky that we're going to do. And then you can do a pop-up color, which we've played with in the past. Okay. Sure. Lots of, I know, options. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the darkest one in the palette. Okay. okay. So whatever darkest you want to go today. I'm okay. going to go pretty smoky because, well, I enjoy the, the flair of drama. Um, and I'm going to take it. And I'm going to literally pack it on the lid. I'm just going to take like a flat brush. Okay. You can see that flat brush. I'm going to give it a little bit of a setting spray or water. Okay. And I'm going to go into my darkest. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to lay it right on that lash line and build it up. Okay. Now, so I've got when a little... we talk Asian eye, yep, perfect. So that plum would I'm be gonna gorgeous take the on you. One. That would be gorgeous on you. So the so reason I'm why this. I'm going from the lash line up is really because with that Asian eye, like we were talking about, is that we're wanting it to really frame. It's all about framing so that that eye pops and you see right into that eye. 
just like we frame a picture, you're going to frame this beautiful eye. Okay. And I typically go a little higher up. Now, granted, I don't have the Asian eye like I wish I did. Um, I'll be honest. I think it's <laughs> uh, we all want what we don't have, right? It's so weird. Um, I don't know where that comes from. So I go a little bit thicker. You should as well go a little bit thicker. Yep. Because it's, I mean, look at the difference. Just the pop, just with the deep. Yep. Exactly. I'm going to go a little past like the crease, so to speak. Exactly. So, and this is a good point. Everyone's crease is in a different place. Newsflash. Yeah. And people go, I don't have a crease. Well, your eyes open. So guess what? It may be right on the lash line, right? For that beautiful Asian elongated eye. But everyone has a crease. It doesn't mean making a new one somewhere else. That's yes. the difference. And so I know I'm talking and you're looking amazing. So bear with me. I might just do one eye just so you can see the difference. And keep okay. Going. okay. So as long as you have a nice good amount. Now, the tip is, is to then go the next shade um, in your palette, the next shade darker to blend in the darkest one you just started. So every shadow as we go along is going to blend out and move up the eye. So there's no strong crease or strong, I should not crease, linear, um, delin can't even say that word. <laughs> Let me try again. Uh, <laughs> It's not going to show a strong line of demarcation. Okay? It's really just for blending. It's just for blending. Okay. So now I'm going to take this gorgeous shade. And at this point, I'm probably not going to wet it. And you don't have to wet the first one either. But I like my pigment to really pop, pop and have some power behind it. So I'm just pressing this in. Now, you're gorgeous. You know, you're making a gorgeous eye blended really quick. I'm making an ugly eye, but I will fix it. And this, 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 people say, why do you, why are you messy? Because you can be with smoky eye. So you can be because you're going to clean it at the end with each level of shadow. Now, if you find that your darkest is too dark, then you just go in and blend out that lighter one. If you find it's too high, which mine is a little high, I'm going to go back in my next shadow, which is going to really kind of soften it. Now, with an Asian eye, it is important to go a little thicker that, than you would if you were just wanting to go on the line. That's why I didn't do liner yet, because you can, you can go um, pretty strongly on a liner, but there's some ideas on where to place it. So I'm gonna go one more time with feeling with my little shadow and my, not the lightest, but almost the lightest, shadow, which is like a cool gray. And now I'm just blending with a fluffy brush. So you could definitely, in this case, you could go in and use, we call it a transition color. You could use a um, bronzer as your transition color. You could use just a very light to transition it out if you're feeling like it's going a little too crazy, or you can keep going, okay? But it's darkest to lightest, not light, dark, light, which is a whole different idea than uh, that traditional, I don't know, first of all, it was 80s, but second of all, <laughs> it was like, you know, the, the whole idea of let's do um, that contour. Let's make a crease where there's not one. That's not the goal. And yeah. by the way, I have what is kind of like more of an, uh, a, um, when it's resting, it's more of a hooded eye. And it, okay. And so this also applies for a hooded eye. So depending on what you have going on, if you can really make it dark on the lower lash and then graduate up, that's the goal. Okay. okay. And sometimes I I'll just say, oh, you're looking great. It's okay. beautiful. And it's really going to pop when the eyeliner happens because okay. I'm doing it very obvious so that you can just can see it. Yeah. Um, and I might not have done this lip with this eye um, necessarily but I wanted you to see the graduation. So I'm just letting you see, can you see that? Yes, awesome. Okay. okay, now, if I need a little cleanup on aisle five, if I went too far up, you can take your concealer brush with a little excess concealer from when you did your concealer or dry, and you can just go in and clean up. 
so that you never want it all the way to your brow. Now, okay. you have that soft smoky, which I love, and that's like a great every day. So now we're gonna go with the eyeliner. Okay. And with the eyeliner, I am partial to, to black, but sometimes I do color. So I'm gonna do what we call a double line, okay? okay. So with this, pick a black or a dark one, okay? Okay. Then pick a black. color or a lighter one. Okay, so you've got black, perfect. Let's go with black first. Okay. And you're gonna line the eye. Okay. All the way across. Now, when you're lining, you wanna make sure, like with your eye, I want it to be nice and rounded. So you're gonna maybe end up having a little thicker in the middle. If you want more elongation, like maybe you want to show that elongation off, then you'll do a little more wean. But I don't want it to be where you go past, I'm going to show you your little guideline from your nose to the corner of your eye to the tip of your brow. That's where you stop. Yep, perfect. I can see it from here. So you have that nice elongation which looks beautiful on your eye. If someone says, oh no, it's too long for their whatever, their decision of what they want their eye to look like, then you can round it even more and not elongate, okay? okay. So if you didn't, elong like for me, if I elongate too much, it changes my eye shape a little too much. So I'll go in and just build up the corner into the middle and stay thin on the out the inside. Now, some people say, oh, don't only do it three quarters of the way or only do, it's distracting. Don't do that. You can always smudge it or thin it out, but go all the way across because that's where your eyelashes should be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we want that framing or extension of the eyelash to show whether you have great eyelashes or not, it's going to appear that you do look at, I mean, your eyes are popping like that. They look gorgeous. Now, if you want, you can go under. Some don't like that and they just wanna look right up into the eye. If I want to, I always go thinner okay. and smudged on the bottom. Always thinner and smudged. I never go like super thick on the bottom because I feel like it drags the eye down. Okay. And I see people do like that halo eye or they'll do a ton of eye makeup all the way around. Looks great on Instagram, does not look great um, on an eye. Uh, typically. Okay. And I, mine tends to look closed off. Like I love putting it in the waterline, but then it, but then it, it'll close. And that's why I typically don't do that. The only time okay. I do it is if I can see skin underneath my eyelash up above, I'll go in and do that, but not so much down below, unless I'm just trying to do a fun look that typically okay. doesn't work as well. Okay. So last but not least, cause I know we got to get going here. We are going to take our fun color or our lighter brown, uh, neutral's fine, purple's fine, anything you want at this point. You have a neutral eye, so you can play with whatever you like. I have this like. color, what's it called? Um, this kind of brownish, oh, burgundy, burgundy suede. suede. It's my favorite. Okay. I love it, and it's perfect for you. So I'm going to go in with Night Violet, just so you can see the difference. Yep, burgundy suede is so beautiful. You'll see that there's so many people talking on YouTube about burgundy suede. It's like the hot color. Okay. Um, and we've had it forever. It's just, people just love it. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to show you actually on my hand, what you're going to do on your eye. So okay. you're going to take it. And so you have this black base, right? You're going to not go over it, not right over it. You're going to go above it. Okay. And then that way I want you to be able to see that. There you go. Yes. Above it. I know it's, it's like, what? because you don't have the lash line to, as your guide anymore. But the beautiful thing is it doesn't have to be perfect because then you're going to take it and you're going to blend it out. And that causes a nice, really pretty definition as well. And do I just so use I'm the just blender blending. on the end? Yep. You can use your fingertip if you need or the blender on the end. 
And are there any tips for like, you know, women after 40? Cause I mean, I know I get like a little bit, like the makeup doesn't sit on my skin the same way as it yes. did like in twenties. Yes. So, um, one is blending. So you really don't want the eye makeup and that's what I'm doing right now with this fluffy, no, nothing on it brush. And that's to blend any of that excess shadow because the shadow, if it sits on your skin, it creates that creepy look. Okay. And same with anything too mm -hmm. shimmery. Now, a little glimmer is nice, but too much glimmer. And then you don't have, you have that powder sitting on the eye look. Okay. Okay. I also, if I'm finding that I have, you know, everyone has different issues, but I find that, okay, this is a little bit stark. If I go in and give a little lift or a warmth of my bronzer and take it, and I can use it with this really light fluffy brush with hard, hardly anything, and it lifts the eye just ever so slightly, you're not making a crease, okay? That I don't want you to think because you're not in the crease, you're mm -hmm. above it. Okay. Yeah. And it just looks a little bit more finished and done. Yeah, nice. Okay. So it's really about one placement for, um, you know, we start getting older and we start doing our makeup like we did when we were a teenager and like anything mud would look good on us. Um, <laughs> smeared on our face, man, she looks fabulous. But now <laughs> we really want to have not a lot of product on the eye. And this goes with anything on the face, not a lot of product, really blending is our, is our friend these days. Okay. And just going in and then building that color and smoothing that color so that it's not distracting and it's not grabbing into skin that maybe is a little more crazy. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be mindful of time. Do yes. we, now we go into mascara or I would say good? load up that mascara. It looks amazing, Sonia. Amazing. So any tips for applying mascara properly that like, yes, because I do have, I do hear a lot from Asian friends and family that you know our eyelet lashes are not as long and um, well the good news is is we framed them with a nice thick eyeliner okay. that's your first thing which is funny because people go, go to mascara but guess what you can only build so much volume on uh you know unless you do do faux lashes and so what i'm doing here is i'm taking a good amount of product and the first thing i do is i press it into that uh root of the lash and I literally, I call it the press and wiggle because it's at, it's creating a base. Then I start pulling through. Okay. Okay. And depending on if you want it more elongated, you're going to focus more on the outside of the eye. If you want your eye to be a little bit more rounded, you're going to focus on the middle of the eye and really building that up. And I really, you know, just in these last few minutes or seconds, I should say, that we're doing this, I really like to suggest that the last thing you do, and I learned this from actually Bobby Brown, a uh, famous makeup artist that I worked with, is to step back, get out of your mirror and say, does it look, does it work? And is there anything that we need to change? Is it too elongated? If it was too elongated, I might shorten it up a bit and just go in and shorten it up. I might round it out and put a little bit more darkness in the center. If I want it, if it's too round and more dull eye and I want it more elongated, I might extend my, la my, um, my eyeliner and do a little bit more lash on the outside. What do you recommend for me? You, you did a fabulous job. I, I mean, I like your elongated eye a little bit more. I like that, but I also know you looking like that. If you wanted to play, I would take a little bit of that, that burgundy suede mm -hmm. and do more in the middle for you. Okay. Hold up that middle just a little bit, like right above the eyeball. Um, I should say iris. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can you see? Yeah. See how that kind of just opened it a little bit? 
Yeah. This is being very picky, guys. I'm just, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna play and we're gonna look at different shapes, why not? But and yeah. why did you why did you say it? So that out? actually rounded out the eye and gave a lift to the eye. Okay. So um it's all about shapes, right? So if you if you want to draw a shape and make it more elongated, you're gonna draw outward and it's gonna be even or that sort of thing. If you want it rounded, you're gonna draw a little bit of roundness with that liner. Mm. That's what we did with you. I like that. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought to do that. Well, Very we get cool used tip. to doing it a certain way and seeing ourselves in a certain way. I look funny, yeah. you know, too. I think that's probably one of the most aging things. I think so too, not trying, right? Doing, I mean, not, well, doing the same thing new, for think. decades that you learned in your 20s yeah. um, when your skin was different, your style was different, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like stuck in a time warp. So absolutely, I love like chatting with you and like doing different things because yeah, I do know like what works for my face and everything. However, yeah, I don't want to be stuck in like doing the same thing. <laughs> 80s, right? <laughs> not ages, but yeah, we don't want to be stuck in a decade that doesn't serve us anymore right Absolutely. and so like right now I, I just have to say like I would not have this lipstick on with this smoky eye uh, okay okay I would have a neutral or something light kind of pick your pop mm -hmm. but because I started out I was there <laughs> I didn't have anything so I had to right <laughs> anyways awesome yeah Thank you so much, Katrina. This Thank is great. You. Is there any last tip you want to like share? Or... Um, embrace what you have. Yeah. Don't try to be a different shaped eye or sh different shaped body even. It's really about showing off what you have. And not everybody has what you have. Like here we are looking at and idolizing other people with what they have or they see as beauty. And really, we if we continue down this path of trying to find that ideal of a look, um, first of all, it's not gonna work out well and only you can be authentically you. So, um, and I think it applies more to makeup, more than any, just not just to makeup, I should say, but it applies to everything. But especially in that way, makeup's supposed to be fun and it's not about fixing anything. It's about showing off, you know, what you have to offer the world for that day. So have fun yeah. and um, play. Yeah. We'll so instead of worrying about the grass being greener over there, like it's just not have fun with your own yard. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh my God. I love it. Could well, you I'm going to pick a lip so or an much. eye. I'm going to pick that. But, but other than that, hopefully nobody just jumped on because they're going to be like, she's amazing. What? Um, but <laughs> I use my face as a palette just to kind of hopefully give you some tips. So I appreciate you, Sonia. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's always fun with you. And if if anyone yeah. has any questions, like let us know so we can do another fun tutorial focusing on what you guys want to know about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you everyone for joining us. You know, hit the like button, comment, uh, subscribe. If you hit the bell, then you'll get notified when there are new, new videos each week. And definitely like leave us comments if there's something specific you want to see. Katrina is incredibly talented and we love doing videos together. And I love like getting all these tips and everything. So um, any special requests, we're happy to hear and, and see what we can do. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Have a beautiful life. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> beautiful life. I love it. Bye. Bye.